Don't forget to join Clive Anderson, Eddie Murphy and Ben Elton in an hour here on BBC One. Oh, I saw it. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over, the show that's never doubted Damon Hill for a minute. <laughs> Thanks to Ian Metcalf, by the way, who spoils his copy of the St Albans and Harfenden Review to send us this piece about a local appearance by TV comic Lee Hurt, the bald funny one from the hit TV sports quiz They Think It's All Over. And here to prove it is a photo of comedian Lee Hurt. <laughs> How did you ever think you'd get away with that? Well, We've seen you on television. <laughs> this isn't my real state, though. I plucked them out individually. Oh, no, no, no. Well, joining David's team this week, an England cricketer who actually dreamt he'd hit the winning run in the World Cup final, and then was woken up by the clatter of his middle stump against Holland. Dermot <laughs> Reed. On Gary's team, a comedian you may have seen on the tube alongside Jules Holland and Paula Yates, but unlike them, he still has to travel by public transport. <laughs> Mark Hurt. <laughs> we are related, actually, me and Lee. We were brothers, but we were, we were Siamese twins joined at the head. I got, I got the hair. <laughs> but it is ginger, so he won. So we're off. <laughs> Our first round highlights the improbable excuses sports people give when things go wrong. Gary, Rory and Mark, here are England's best moments from the second innings against the West Indies in Trinidad in 1994. Trouble here, trouble, this is absolute disaster for England. That's out, Robin Smith has gone. And that really is a complete tragedy. But England skipper Mike Atherton didn't watch any of it after he'd been out. So what excuse did Mike give for not watching his team's disastrous performance? He blinked. <laughs> 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 I think he'd forgotten his kit, so they sent him home because he had to play in his pants. No <laughs> Was he um, queuing up for the No Holds Barred They Think It's All Over video? Soon to be available in the shop, $14.99. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rory, I believe you can phone in for that as well, can't you? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you never had proper sports equipment in Yorkshire with our lad. You played cricket on the street. You used your little brother as the stumps. That's what we did. <laughs> David used a little Filipino boy, didn't you? <laughs> 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 the cigars on the head. I think it was Mike Hafford, and the reason he wasn't watching them was he was getting his... No, I was just... Well, you just said... I won't give him any points. If he gives you the answer, you can do it. Go on, what? Go on, Lee. We're what behind you, son. Well, you're so big, you can be behind everybody, Rory. <laughs> Uh, I think Mike Hafford, and the reason he wasn't there watching, was he was off getting his kit dry clean to get all that dirt out of his pocket. <laughs> do you do Mike Hafford an impression, Dermot? No, no. Oh, well, never mind. We'll move no, on. Sorry about that. <laughs> Any cricketing impressions? Well, I mean, Fred Truman, I once asked Fred what he, what he, whether he ever used dirt uh, when he bowled, and he said, eh, well, no, he said, when I was a lad, well, we, when I played, we, we couldn't afford soil. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think on this thing? Because he said, after, and he said, I only had the dirt in my pocket to dry my hands. <laughs> I mean, often I get out of the bath and empty a hoover bag over my head. You know? <laughs> Before you do that, put a bit of glue on. Yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> but it all the yeah. But it all comes out great. Well, I'll do the same as him. Yeah. Any ideas? This is second. Why innings, Mike Atherton didn't watch the rest of his team being bowled out? Was was he, he, um... he couldn't give a shit. Was it that? <laughs> 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 they do have facilities in Trinidad. What to give a shit? Yeah. <laughs> is that when they come up to you in the you street and go, so "This is good shit." <laughs> <laughs> was he oiling his bat, which is gay slang for, for something? I mean, I don't know. Land it across then, David. He just didn't want to watch. 
It was a choice, it wasn't anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had to swim at the beach. Uh, Hang on, uh, put a captain, put a captain, because you're getting sorry, it quite yeah. badly wrong. Oh, okay. I'm only going by Nick's I'm only going by Nick's body language. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> go on, Dave. No, Dave, Dave. What? Let's go. What? Go on, do it. Do it. Have you got the answer? <laughs> <laughs> he can't speak his mouth full. <laughs> Oh dear. Welcome to another edition of David Gower's Upstairs Downstairs. Did you not? Yep. Okay, here's my captain to explain. Well, it was a hot, steamy day in Port of Spain, Trinidad. Uh, we'd been in the field all day. I went out to bat. It was LBW Kirtley Ambrose's first ball for naught. Uh, came back in, um, took the stuff off and had a shower. And at the end of a shower, I'm afraid, the innings was all over. It was a fairly brief affair. <laughs> In fact, oh. it was the briefest affair since Mike Gatting shagged that barmaid in that flower bed. <laughs> David, Lee and Dermot, it's football for you. Here's Alan Shearer knocking one in for Newcastle after his £15 million pound transfer. In fact, Newcastle could have got him for nothing as a teenager, but they let him go. So the question is, what was Newcastle's excuse for letting the world's costliest footballer slip through their fingers all those years ago? Was he um, shown into the dressing room where he met Peter Beardsley who scared him off? <laughs> Actually, uh, Kevin Keegan gave him a team talk the other day and he, uh, he said to the boys, boys, you know, I'm going to get some new faces up here at Newcastle and uh, Peter, Beard, Peter Beardsley said, put me down for one. <laughs> 15 Kevin. million pounds yeah. for one player. Yeah. And Kevin Keegan's supposed to be a good manager. Now, I've done a bit of research on this, Gal. You can get some of them players for 100,000 pounds, my theory, buy 150 and pack the goal. <laughs> Well, why are you thinking, Jim? You got any other impressions? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I mean, Imran is my favourite impression, Nick. <laughs> As you know, I had a magnificent wedding. You know, there's many distinguished people at my wedding. There was Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, Prince Andrew, Nick Hancock wasn't invited. <laughs> it was just like having Prince Charles in the room, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, Kenneth Williams. <laughs> we have a suspicion. Yep that he might have applied at that stage as what, as a goalie as opposed to a... Yeah, I'll give you it for that. Alan didn't want to rub salt into the wounds of his new club, so here's Newcastle journalist John Gibson to tell the story. When he went to St James's Park for the trial, there was a tremendous number of kids there, but only one goalkeeper. The coach needed a second goalkeeper, picked on Alan, he played in goal for the game, very expensive mistake, cost him £15 million pound in the end. Same thing happened to Gary, you know. He tried out as a goalkeeper, it was no good, and he couldn't be asked to leave the box. <laughs> Shearer was just like any other Geordie teenager. He had his first trial at 12. <laughs> Alan Shearer... <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Alan Shearer is a man so dull that he was once in the papers for having a one-in-a-bed romp. <laughs> Another player also turned up at Newcastle and was mistaken for a goalie. It was Dave Besant. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have nil and David's team have three. Yeah. Our next round is the injury board. Each side selects a number from the board which reveals a sports person and a something. We'd like to know how the something injured the sports star and stopped him from turning out. Gary Steen, can you pick a number, please? Eight. Number eight. Okay, that's ex-West Ham and current Reading striker, Abby Trevor Jean. Morley, and Mrs. Trevor Morley. What? How did she injure him? Yeah, how did Mrs. Trevor Morley injure him? Must have been something bad, because he's got two sledgehammers now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, isn't that Frank Zappa? <laughs> <laughs> he beat him at croquet. <laughs> Now, she's um, Norwegian, isn't she? Monica Morley, I believe. She must be. <laughs> Had she unwisely <laughs> given him some reheated puffin? <laughs> you know Norwegians eat puffin, don't you? The underheat puffin. I think... It yeah. didn't have some domestic... Uh, Mrs. Well, and Mrs. Help. Morley. Yes. Domestic um, <laughs> help. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's an incident. A little man who comes in. <laughs> 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 
puffing the butler. <laughs> he was caught puffing the butler, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there in the local pub in near Dagenham Heathway a stripper called Bubbles? And wasn't there some... <laughs> wasn't he found forever blowing? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Mrs. <Richard. laughs> now, uh, oh, dear. I think didn't, didn't um, a kitchen devil rep come round to the house and Mrs. Morley in order to test the knives, tested yeah. them on him and got him right in the... Um, Proverbial. Right in the... Um, Bollocks, I've forgotten the word. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you three points for that, yeah. The answer is that Trevor Morley's Norwegian wife, Monica, stabbed her husband with a bread knife during a domestic incident in 1991, causing him to miss most of the rest of the season. I mean, what could a man say that would inspire his wife to such a drastic act? Darling, I've arranged a wife-swapping party with Peter and Mrs. Beardsley. <laughs> <laughs> David's team now. <clears throat> can we have your number, please? Nine, please. Okay, let's have a look. It's snooker player Ronnie O'Sullivan and a pot plant. So how was the 20-year-old snooker star with the convict father um, <laughs> stymied by a yucca? It would have been more effective than just one bread knife. Look at it. <laughs> so upper-class people fight, they fight with plants. Yeah. When you get a garden, you'll understand me. <laughs> well, we're not allowed them in the city, sir. Ten days a weekend or something. I oh, will be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ronnie O'Sullivan? Right. He's dead inside, just stabbing a bloke to death and cutting another bloke from there to there. That's right, isn't it? I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, there's mum. Can I just uh... be left out of this one, then? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get involved. <laughs> And Ronnie O'Sullivan's in the paper saying, I still love me dad, right? And I thought, yeah, if my dad did that, I'd tell him I loved him and all. <laughs> Isn't there, wasn't his mother also inspired for tax fraud? I think possibly. What does she try and do? Claim the murder weapon as a tax allowable expense? <laughs> <laughs> now, it's snooker, and what happens is, you know what snooker's like? They waited yeah. so long for something interesting to happen that the yucca plant grew in front of him and blocked his shot. <laughs> <laughs> now he seems... Kicked it, didn't he? He kicked it. Yeah, I'll give you one bonus point for that, yeah. During the Benson and Hedges Masters in February this year, Ronnie O'Sullivan gave a pot plant in a concrete pot a good kicking and had to struggle through the rest of the tournament with a broken foot. <laughs> Ronnie has brought shame and disgrace to his family. He earns an honest living. <laughs> like Ronnie, his dad once achieved a maximum break. The whole of E-Wing escapes. <laughs> so, at the end of that round... I believe David's team have three and Gary's team have four. Yeah. It's round three and that means our what's going on round. We play our team some curious sporting footage and ask them to tell us what it's all about. Gary's team, what do you think is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> you say, uh, dressing room, uh, my back pocket, the emodium. <laughs> <laughs> His cats are buried under the pit. <laughs> Is Mark Bosnich about to surface in a U-boat? <laughs> Or is it something really simple? What? Like Lee? <laughs> it is quite simple, yeah. yeah. First water man, it was all spouting out, wasn't it? And the guy had to put a like bucket Lee. on it at Lee <laughs> to, stop, to get the game going again. Yeah, fair enough. I'll give you two points for that. Yeah. That was an occasion points. during last season's clash between Leeds and Southampton when a water sprinkler burst. Although disaster was luckily avoided when somebody remembered they'd brought their bucket. Oh. <laughs> there hasn't been a repeat since George Gregor took over. He filled the hole up with a bung. <laughs> David's team, strange goings on at Arsenal for you, but why? Okay, any ideas? <laughs> Were they um, testing a new job strap for Linda Christie? <laughs> <laughs> All those leather straps and uh, the springy stuff, is it something to do with Frank Boff? <laughs> 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 
Well, it's uh, got to be there for, to, to practice set pieces. Long balls, corners, throw-ins. Especially the long ball. I think Wimbledon have, have got about half a dozen of these. They use them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I think that's fair enough. I'll give you three points for that. Yeah, right. Good one. And for having the balls to wear that shirt. It was a training device employed by Arsenal just after the war. They didn't have any players good enough to deliver quality balls into the box, so they had to build a mechanical catapult. It was finally accepted by the players after it shagged a turnstile and tried to rob the North Bank. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team has got six and Gary's team has seven. An old favourite now, it's our photo fit round. We've stitched together different bits of well-known sporting faces into a new hole. Our team's job is to work out who the original owners are. David's team, first of all, who's poking around here? <laughs> I would say the whole picture is Gaza and he still doesn't know how to use a condom. <laughs> <laughs> looks, uh, looks a bit like Duncan Good Goodhue on a, on a cold day. Yeah. <laughs> Who's looking at the bottom half of the face? He's like, it looks like the, the bottom half of the face has been out in the sun more than the hands, so it's Mike Atherton. <laughs> 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 it's Gazza the eyes, isn't it? Gazza, yeah. That's Gazza's right. eyes? Gazza. Yeah. The, um, Gazza's son is going up very fast. Only last night Cheryl said, look, he's starting to focus. And the baby said, well, give him some more coffee then. <laughs> Who's <laughs> the head? Who's the top bit anyway? Gary? Gary? Line back. Lineker. Lineker. The jellyfish. The um, mm. wit mixed jellyfish. Yes, it is in fact a jellyfish from the Portsmouth Sea Life Centre, which they <laughs> renamed <laughs> Gary Lineker. <laughs> Lineker the jellyfish now has pride of place in the tank next to Linford, the giant winkle, <laughs> and Fatima, the bearded clam. <laughs> yeah, two you've got, one more to go. Well, the, yeah, that's sort of face and hand bit. It's definitely an older man. Could be, could be Ray Ellingworth. And it could is Ray Ellingworth. It is indeed. Well uh, done. Yeah, let's flip well it up and have a look. Thank you. Thank you. There we are. Lineker the jellyfish. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne <laughs> and Ray Ellingworth. Well done. You get all three. Okay, Gary's team, here's your misshapen beast of Beelzebub. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but I've had her. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a laugh every week. Oh, no. Every week. It's, it's a tradition. It's, it's a tradition. so depressing. <laughs> is it Ken Barlow welding? <laughs> See what that That's why England never get any swimming medals, though. <laughs> <laughs> that woman from the Diana Spy video. It's <laughs> <laughs> about as real as it, yeah. Um, Joe Bugner. Joe, Joe Bugner, Bugner. Joe that's Bugner. right, yeah, Joe Bugner. Last year, at the age of 45, Joe Bugner became the Australian heavyweight champion, beating Helen Daniels from Neighbours in the final. <laughs> in fact, Joe Bugner's been knocked out so many times, he's got a cauliflower arse. <laughs> Are the eyes um, on Biggles over there? Indeed, it is David Gower in his guise of the uh, Gypsy Moth or whatever it was. What time Tiger Moth. <laughs> <laughs> gypsy Moth was a little bigger. Yes, yes, yes. Hard Tiger to fly. fly. When you, you fly that. <laughs> Where was it you flew, flew that? Uh, over the Gold Coast, yeah. Carrara. That's oh. right, yep. Australia. Apparently, um, you were told to stop because the scorers couldn't concentrate yeah, properly. And it was the only time you troubled the scorers throughout that whole tour. <laughs> I actually had a very good day. I got a very good 13 in the morning. In the really? Morning. <laughs> You've been exhausted! <laughs> Gary Steen? Go for it, Mark thinks he knows this. Is it a, uh, a Glenn Hoddle? No. Oh, oh yeah, that's the Yorkshire <laughs> bastard! Split <laughs> it up, let's see. Ray <laughs> Wilkins! Oh, my Tina Wilkins! A long time ago. David Gower is the gimp. And, uh, <laughs> Old glass jaw bugner. <laughs> okay, so at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine and David's team have oh, nine. Okay. It's time for our regulars to get physical now as we play field the sportsman. David and Lee, it's your turn first. Let's wander up there. They have 90 seconds to guess the identity of a mystery sports star using only their hands. <coughs> 
This is a bit loose, Gary. You've been wearing it. Thought <laughs> <laughs> I could have a duel, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, get the yuckers out. <laughs> All right, <then>. Okay. <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> okay, your 90 seconds start now. Sorry, sir. Is that you, Dave? It is. It is. Not very much for help. <laughs> oh, uh, they always wear too much gel. Have you noticed that? What did you say? Oh, right, right. How did you explain that then? <laughs> Dave, what? Just for a laugh, we're going to tie the shoes together. We've <laughs> got any other clues? Time's running out. Oh, we've got, got any clues? Only Nick should give us a clue at some stage. His trousers. He's All right, he's there. protecting himself against the bright lights in the studio. Bright lights in the studio. Uh, hang on. What, with a gel? It's a ball. Give us uh, it, give us it, give us it. Oh, oh, well, the champagne. What colour is it? That's well, champagne, champagne. champagne. Look, that is uh, a champagne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a cricket oh, ball. Um, what colour is it? It's, I can't tell. <laughs> Um, what colour is it? Green. Green. <laughs> Green. Must be one of yours. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I can't. Dave, I call it. I call it, and I was blindfolded. <laughs> Have a look. Hi, oh, Dave. Cool, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hi. Dominic, England Very test sorry. hero. Can you just say out loud to the nice ladies and gentlemen who you support? Stoke City. Thank you, mate. <laughs> bye bye. Good luck. Thanks, Dominic. <laughs> now, a little bit of cheating there we had, Mr. Reeve, Still shouting out, open a bottle of champagne. Oh, yeah, am I going to know that? You <laughs> did have David with you, to be fair. Yeah, but he's sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Okay. What champagne are you doing? Cork. I don't know. Come on, Gary and Rory, here you go. Who's swapping on? Do stand over here, Gary? Yeah. All right, then. You pay now, it's just fun, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we have our next mystery guest, please? <laughs> <laughs> Your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> oh. oh, what's this? Oh, my <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's Madam Whiplash again. <laughs> I haven't seen you since last Tuesday at a sneaker kit. <laughs> this is an extension. <laughs> got something there. No, no, they pushed on hard. Yeah. <laughs> what, what have you got? Oh. oh, he's wearing Dennis Taylor's glasses. He's wearing Dennis Taylor's glasses. <laughs> Uh, at the end of that round, that means that David's team have nine and Gary's team have twelve. <laughs> Our final round is, as ever, the whistle-blowing, flag-waving name game. Once again, this week, all the answers will be team names from various countries around the world. The winning team goes first, which is your team at the moment, Gary. Twelve. Pass it on to Rory. And your 90 seconds start now. Uh, football team, really crap, used to play for them. Yeah. Not Spurs, the other one. Walk, uh, Walker's uh, Chris. Oh, Walk, that's the oh, very good. Uh, a North London rugby team named after the Ottoman <laughs> Empire. Uh, uh, Saracens. Saracens. Saracens, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who all these people are, but they're, they're, it's a place, there's a hit, Marty Wilde in the 60s, taking a trip. Oh, Ab Abergavenny. Abergavenny. Not Wednesdays, but 
Thursday. Yeah, have we got any Thursdays? Very good. Uh, I think it's a football team, nice and French. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> team, I believe. Um, the emblem of Canada. The underheated puffins. <laughs> the underheated puffins is their nickname. Um, emblem of Canada. It's on the flag. Maple. Maple. Maple leaf. Maple, maple, yeah. <laughs> uh, maple leaf from a town on Lake Ontario. 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 Um, last three words. Last one is street slang yeah. for speed. You must know this. Oh. <laughs> um, Crack. Smack. Uh, careful. 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 Just speed, mate. Just speed. speed. Um, Fast. Whiz. Whiz. And the, the first bit is a, a big, a big place in Missouri. Um, um, biggest city in Missouri. Very close to Kansas, actually. Gee Kansas whiz. City. Kansas City. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Scottish. I think it's a Scottish rugby team. They're old boys. Of uh, old boys, which is like you know. Time. You need eight to your level. Right. Okay, you're 90 <coughs> seconds to start now. That's it, I'm afraid. Right. You're 90 seconds to start now. Right. Number one, Dave and Dermot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a football team. Cockney rhyming slang for hair, something fair. Barney. Correct. <laughs> Second one is a cricket team, and it's a consonant. 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 <laughs> MCC. Correct. <laughs> Third one, you might queue up for them in January and get a bargain. Fail. Correct. <laughs> Number four, the second part of this football team, is what you shit out of eventually. <laughs> <laughs> It's not quite in your arse. It's a bit further up from your arse. It's colon. Colon. And the first bit is the initials, like, like not the F-A. A-C. A-C. First bit. The land colon. We have an aerobatics display team. Very famous they are. And they're British. The crunchies. No, what is it? The crunchies. They are. And Robin Hood used to fire them from his bow. Arrows. And the colour of them is red. Correct. <laughs> this is cricket again. They're not the major areas where you would play. Minor counties. Why? Yes. Why, Dave? Sometimes you startle me. <laughs> Manuel's one is this, Later. other than yours. <laughs> You're what they were. <laughs> So, at the end of the game, David's team has 15, but Gary's team are the winners with 17. <laughs> so, our thanks to David Lee and Dermot, Gary, Rory and Mark. We're all off to watch the highlights of Scotland v Estonia. <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now. Coming up next on BBC.